Stuart Eldorati's Ripple Chief Legal Officer just said something that I believe confirms the thesis of why we're all involved in XRP. In this video, I want to break down exactly what he said and why this is so important to the XRP investment thesis. I cannot overstate enough on this channel that what we do on this channel is really try to predict what the future is going to look like. Look, I'm an enthusiast. You guys are probably all enthusiasts on this asset class, but we're not as close to the disruptive changes going on in the world than Ripple themselves. So when Ripple themselves or someone like Stuart Alderati, who is obviously in the know, starts talking about things we have been talking about and forecasting on this channel for a while, it is extremely important because it is confirmation that we are over the target and we are on the right path for analyzing why Ripple and XRP are going to be winners in this market. In this video, I want to break down what that thesis is and what Stuart Alderati just said. Make sure to stick around for this whole thing. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like these videos and subscribe to the channel. These two simple things really do help me out so much. Also, if you have any good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video off and just quickly say that one of the things that has always made Ripple controversial from the start is Ripple's path to mass adoption. Everyone else in the cryptocurrency industry wanted to focus on providing tools to retail, providing tools to the common person, while Ripple took a completely different approach. While the rest of the industry was screaming down to the banks, down to the institutions, Ripple was saying, hey, for the same exact reason all these retail people want these new rails, all these retail people want these new products, institutions are going to want these new products as well. And when you think about it, most people can't even understand cryptocurrencies. So hopefully once the institutions have these products, they can simplify them for their customers and then their customers can use the same systems they're already using, the same systems they already understand, but those systems will now be underpinned by new products and more efficient rails. Just a better way of moving money. The average person really doesn't truly understand how money moves in the world right now. So it's funny to me that all these different cryptocurrency companies think people will suddenly be interested in how money moves in the new financial system. My bet is that enthusiasts like you and I will, right? Because we're trying to make money off of it. We're trying to invest. But the average person, right? They just want their product to work better. They just want their product to work faster. And that's always been Ripple's idea of how this all shakes out. Just use cryptocurrencies to make the rails better. And then the big institutions who have the budgets to create better software, the big institutions who have the budgets to interact with hundreds of millions of clients at a time, those are going to be the ones who create new rails for their products that retail then benefit from. Now, the reason I want to drive this home so hard at the start of this video is because for a long time, this idea, this thesis of how things were going to play out was really propagated by people in the XRP community, right? Ripple really couldn't come out and say these things directly. There was clips of them kind of saying it, kind of alluding to certain things. But, you know, it's their business at the end of the day, and they're in competition against other people. So they can't really come out and directly say these things. But over the course of time, we have started to amass enough different quotes from people inside of Ripple that, yes, this is, of course, the strategy. I want to share with you something from Stuart Alderati just today, because I believe this is just one of those things you can add to the list to say, yes, we are over the target. We have been right with Ripple strategy, and we have been right in how this plays out. Take a look at this from Stuart Alderati. Stuart Alderati said the other day that Ripple will be the most trusted company for institutional crypto solutions. This is exactly in line with the thesis we have been talking about. Ripple understanding that the majority of big corporations in the United States and the rest of the world don't actually understand how to fix payments. And they really don't have the time to fix payments either. If I'm Uber, I need to focus on getting someone a ride and building a technology to get them that ride. If I'm Amazon, I need to focus on, hey, how do I get my product from point A to point B? I don't want to be hyper focusing on fixing the plumbing of how all these people get paid as an intermediary. That's not their job. It's not what they're focusing on. What Ripple wants to do is work with these institutions, work with these corporations to provide new rails to make their products better. It is such an obviously needed solution in the world. 
most big institutions, especially legacy institutions like big banks and investment firms, they don't even have tech engineers at their company. And if they do, they are building, I mean, just take a look at some of their app interfaces. They're terrible. Take a look at some of their websites. They're horrible. That's what they're building. You really think they're going to be building a brand new tokenization platform to move value all around the world instantaneously? No, of course not. And most of them are already coming out and saying, hey, we're not doing that. BlackRock came out the other day and said, hey, it's not going to be these private systems. It's not going to be these permission systems. It's going to be the public decentralized platforms that really make the difference. Citibank came out the other day. They said people aren't interested in city token. They're interested in cross chain interoperability or moving from one permissioned environment like Citi's permissioned environment to Bank of America's permissioned environment. That's another way of saying public protocols, the ones you and I own. And what we're seeing is Ripple is looking to be the leader in building out these institutional systems. If you combine this with the fact that Ripple is ushering institutional products, it is easy to see where this goes. Think about this. Ripple is looking to add DID to the XRP ledger, decentralized ID. What other cryptocurrency project is looking to do something like that? Ripple is looking to add clawbacks. Actually, they have already added clawbacks, so Ripple has added clawbacks to the XRP ledger. What are clawbacks for? Well, we know based on the cryptocurrency ethos is not for cryptocurrency people. It's really for a big institution who wants to issue an asset who needs to remain compliant with the regulator. Ripple is now trying to usher into the XRP ledger a permission DEX, or in other words, a way that you can actually trade on the XRP ledger's decentralized exchange with know your customer and AML. These are critical things to large institutions. And Ripple seems to be the only company focusing on these things. Now, for a while, we have just looked at these developments and we have said, okay, Ripple's the only one doing this. Well, uh, it seems like that's their goal. But to see Stuart Alderati actually come out and directly say, Ripple will be the most trusted company for institutional crypto solutions, that is a whole nother story. That is Ripple directly saying, hey, this case is almost wrapped up. We're ready to go and we have the institutional interest. And I wanted to show you another document pertaining to this because I also thought this was extremely interesting. This was brought to my attention earlier today. And what it talks about is really how institutions are looking at each one of these cryptocurrency networks. Now, I can't show you the top one, but this top one is Ethereum. And it says Ethereum is good for crowdfunding. Uh, it's an alternative to Bitcoin as a blockchain platform, uh, relatively mature thinking around smart contracts. So programmability, a lot of different new projects, crowdfunded, all, all, all that kind of stuff, which is great. But you kind of get the sense based on the rest of this article that it's not what institutions ultimately are going to want. And it's not that hard to see why they wouldn't want to use a product like Ethereum. It's slow, expensive, and Ethereum is really the public testing ground for what a lot of these institutions would rather just implement on the back end, right? All these institutions are going to need their own private permission systems on the back end. They can't just throw all their customer data on the XRP ledger blockchain and say, oh, like, I guess everyone can see into this person's bank account now. That's not going to work, right? You need these public blockchains to move data between the permission blockchains or move value between the permission blockchains. And it just seems like to me, everything Ethereum is doing is great, but it makes more sense to actually be a private permission chain. We'll leave that because it's a little more complicated and for another video, but take a look at what they say about Ripple. Aims to provide a platform for banks to transact without needing central counterparts or correspondence probably the closest thing to what investment banks are looking for today. This is an extremely interesting note, especially because it specifically talks about what investment banks want. Now, what do we know about Ripple? Well, they have been working with banks since 2013. They have been working with banks since 2014. Since they've been a company, it's always been their goal. So does it surprise me that the Ripple platform is really what these banking institutions want? No, because they have been having these conversations from the start. That is who they've been working with. As Stuart Alderati already said, Ripple will be the most trusted company for institutional crypto solutions. Why? Because that's who their customer base is. That's who they're building these things for. So it's no surprise to me that this confirmation is exactly what we get. What Ripple is building is what they need. Now, I thought this last note about Arc3 was also interesting. Originally a custodium of nine banks, now 42 banks, product is called Corda, 
plenty of possibilities for startups to extract banks' money. So they seem to be talking about R3 and Corda more as a link to the banks rather a link between banks. Another interesting little tidbit there, it's always going to depend on who ultimately put this out, what's their view on everything, but it just goes back to really what we've been talking about for a very long time in terms of Ripple strategy and their thesis. Ripple has been working with the large institutions since day one. They understand what they need and they have the resources and personnel to build these things. For the longest time, this was seemed as a crazy strategy, right? These large institutions, we need to be taking them down. We need to be bringing them down. They're never going to adopt cryptocurrency. But it seems like we are finally at the time in history where this paradigm is changing. Institutions are looking to be onboarded. Institutions want a partner. Institutions are not building these things themselves. And when you look at the landscape of who is actually going to build these things, who is actually going to work with the institutions, there is no more obvious choice out there than Ripple using the XRP ledger. Not only is Ripple already building things these institutions need, DID, clawbacks, centralized, decentralized exchanges, what Ripple is also doing is putting the personnel in place and working with regulators to make these things happen. Now, I like to put working with regulators in quotes because in some jurisdictions they're working with regulators and in some jurisdictions they're beating regulators, but they're either winning or they're getting the clarity they need. Most of the industry hasn't even started down this road. They're just waiting for Congress and other regulators to throw broad rules at them that they can get and then get in line with. The fact of the matter is, is Ripple and XRP already have their place carved out. They already have their clarity. And the second this case is dead and gone for good, that clarity, I believe, in combination to a lot of these things Ripple is building, is going to propel them miles ahead of the rest of the cryptocurrency industry. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. And for now, Nickel out.